I think we have enough time to at least start the next topic about uh, different types of attention. So now that we learned about sequences and recurrent neural networks and how to model sequences, let's go back to attention and see what type of attention mechanisms we can have and try to study that. This we learned about, you have encoder, decoder architecture, an input sentence goes in, an output sentence comes out. All we want to do is model this. P of Y given X. Y is A, B, C, D. Sorry, X is A, B, C, D, and Y is X, Y, Z. That's your source sentence. That's your target sentence. They have different length, N and M. You can model the log of your probability. Because you are taking a log, there is a product. The log of a product is the summation of the logs. So that's what's happening here. Given the previous words before the jth word, so let's say you are interested in predicting the jth word, you are going to condition on all of the previous words from one up until j, and uh, s, s is going to encode the source sentence. So s is source sentence, or it's the source sentence representation. But then we know that you're going to end up with hj in the end. You're going to take hj, you're going to correct its size, this is exactly that capital G matrix that we just saw. So you can adjust it, uh, adjust the output to have the size of your vocabulary. And then you do a softmax, it's gonna give you the probability of the next word. So that's how you model. And you model age by a recurrent neural network. And your recurrent neural network could be a simple RNN, a GRU or an LSTM. And then in the end, you have your corpus of input output data, input output translations. And then you're going to maximize the likelihood or equivalently minimize the negative of the log of the likelihood. I'm going to stop here because we are out of time. It's 1.30 already. And then we are going to continue next time from the attention models. For those of you who want to leave, you can leave. And for those of you who have questions and want to stay, I'll be around. I was curious about this diagram in the left, top left. Mm -hmm. The the input sequence, A, B, C, D, then end of sentence, X, Y, Z, is that just showing that as we translate, we're really streaming like a paragraph and we translate it on the fly by doing sentence by sentence? Or is, is that showing like Y and then a concatenation at the end of the sentence and then the other sentence X as inputs? So I guess your question is about this unit. That unit, the I guess the unlabeled blue ones in the top right and why X, Y, Z is an input and an output. Okay, that's a good question. And uh, there are two things that you're gonna try to do, okay? There is a training and there is the inference. And let's say that you already know the parameters of this model. So you trained it somehow. I don't care how you did it. You are giving me some good parameters. Now it's time to translate. An English sentence goes in, A, B, C, D and the end of the sentence, that's your English sentence. And then it's gonna go through this encoder RNN and it's a stacked RNN, okay? And this is layer one, that's layer two. Mm -hmm. It's both deep in time and space. And then you're gonna end up with two H. There is one H here, one hidden state, and there is another hidden state here. Now you want to output the first word of your translation. So you want to output X. Mm -hmm. What do you know at this point in time? You know A, B, C, D. You know end of sentence. These are the information that you have. So you can output the first word. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Or you can output uh, 10 options. This is beam search, actually. You can output 10 words, the highest probability ones. But then you take those, and then you push it through your neural network again. Because at this point in time, you know A, B, C, D, end of sentence, and X. So you're going to use that information to output the next word. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then you know X, Y, and the input sentence, you're gonna use that information to output the next word until you see the end of sentence and then you're gonna stop. That makes sense, huh? Because you don't want to continue this forever. Yeah, it's in, in all of these all of these um, RNNs or GRUs, there's the, the previous hidden state and then the current word. And so you're using the output of the translation as the new current word. Yes. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And there is actually some language modeling also going on there for your translation. Mm -hmm. So some of it is, yes, the input sentence, and some of it is actually your outputted sentence making sense Yeah. in that language. Have the correct semantics, syntactic, et cetera. 
But for training, that was for inference, you do beam search for training, you know A, B, C, D, end of sentence, and you know X, Y, Z, end of sentence. You know everything. Mm -hmm. And you can just use that to give you the probability. So you know the probabilities of your input output sentences. And then you can put it here and train it. Yeah. Meaning you, you know the input output, you pass it through your model, you see what the model's probability assigns to it, or you see what the model assigns the probability of that, that pair, and then you, then you update. Exactly. So basically, you are reading off your likelihood. You're yeah. saying that how likely it is, is this pair of sentence of input and output sentences. Yeah. And then a good, a good model will say that they're 100% likely to go together. And you want to yes. steer it towards that. Exactly. So you want to increase the likelihood of that happening. And that's the role of training. So you train, you come up with these good parameters, and then you do inference. You do translation. This makes perfect sense now. Thank you. Okay, sure. Any other questions?